Hi there, that's Talk Sports fans. I'm excited to have Travis Thomas back for a return visit to talk a little Washington sports. Thanks for coming in. Oh, thanks for having me. You know, uh, when I got the call to, to come back on the show, I knew I did something right the first time because I got another invite to come back. So I was, <laughs> I was, I was honored to uh, to come back and and talk Washington sports with you, my friend. Yeah, thank you. It was one of my favorite episodes what I've had so far. So I was looking forward to chatting to you. Oh, that's great, man. That that means a lot, and uh, hopefully I can um, you know keep it going and not let you down this time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I guess I think um, Washington's had a uh, Prightly had a what I call quite successful free agency. One of the biggest surprises what they did at quarterback. I didn't see them going after Fitzpatrick, but I think that's just we spoke last time. They've got limited options, so I think they thought sign him, and that doesn't necessarily stop them making other moves. Yeah, I mean, um, I got to be honest with you, buddy. At first, I didn't love the move. And, no. I, I, you know, I went on my radio show and, you know, I just pitched a fit about it because um, I thought there were other moves that, that could be made. I, at the time, I thought you could make a trade, um, you know, for a Deshaun Watson or a Russell Wilson, or I, I just thought there were a bunch of options um you know that the Washington football team could have gone in a different direction and um you know obviously they signed Fitzpatrick and if you look at what quarterbacks are paid uh these days in the NFL you know you're talking about getting a starting quarterback in this league for 10 million dollars of course with incentives Fitzpatrick could make 12 million but either way uh, that's still affordable and, um, you know, really a bargain when you look at what these quarterbacks are making. So from a financial standpoint, I certainly understood it. Uh, at first, I thought the style in which Fitzpatrick plays did not fit what Washington football is trying to do. They have a really good defense. Antonio Gibson, we saw, came into his own as a running back last year. So I just thought they want to run the ball. They want to play good defense and not turn the ball over. And so when you bring in Fitzpatrick, you know, my, my first uh, inclination was, well, he's just going to throw interceptions all over the place. Right. And then, yeah. you know, you start seeing the moves. Uh, they bring back Brandon Sheriff to protect them. They go sign Curtis Samuel, which I'm sure you'll ask me about yeah. at receiver. Um, I, I mean, I, 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 it started to make more sense of why they got Fitzpatrick. Then they bring in Adam Humphreys, which I know you asked me about. So I just think, you know, uh, it started to make more sense that this team wants to throw the ball down the field and, uh, and not be what, what I thought. I, they do want to play good defense, and I think they want to have balance offensively. I think they do want to run the football. But I, I think uh, they definitely want to throw the ball down the field. And that's something that, you know, Alex Smith could not give them. And Ryan Fitzpatrick absolutely can give them. Yeah. I mean, my take on it is I think, especially for Mangley, what they've gave, it gives them flexibility. If right. someone like Mac Jones was available where they're picking, I think they would consider it. And then if he's not as ready as, say, some higher um talented quarterbacks Fitzpatrick gives them that flexibility but I still wouldn't rule um them out going after a Sam Darnold I mean there's rumors that both their member Broncos are the more likely candidates if anyone trade for Darnold and with there's so many quarterback spots being taken up they might actually get him cheaper than when we last spoke. Yeah, I, you know, and you and I, um, we talked about this last time, as you mentioned. Yeah. I, I'm, 
I, I think I'm out on Darnold. And I think it'd be a mistake, but um, I, from what I understand, they don't love his tape. I, as a Jets fan, don't want him. So I've never really bought um, these GMs, um, rate him as highly as when he came out, because the problem is, and I think it's perfectly summed up, someone on the podcast who have said this, we know he can make all the throws, that's not the question. It's when he come out was can he take care of the ball and can he stop fumbling? And both of those things are still the case. So it's no good doing one fantastic throw if that only happens one game. A quarterback in this league needs to do just the standard throws, I think. Yeah, I... I um. I, you know, I agree with you, um, but as far as Darnold, you know, going to the Washington football team, it's not just him. I, I don't no. want to see them get any quarterback. I mean, now you have Fitzpatrick, Taylor Heineke, who played really well in the playoff game against the Super Bowl champions, uh, Kyle Allen, who knows the offense, and look, when he plays, he's not that bad. He just gets injured. Um, I mean, I think to me, and, and obviously they still have Steven Montez hanging around. Um, to me, I, I just think for this year, at least for this upcoming season, I think you're okay at quarterback. Yeah. Now, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick signed a two year deal. So next year, he's a year older. Uh, and we'll see how he plays, you know, this, this season, maybe, maybe you address it then. But that gives more time to develop Taylor Heineke, Kyle Allen, and Steven Montez. So maybe, you know, now uh, I will tell you as someone who watches a lot of college football, this this draft class as far as quarterback is really good. Uh, from Zach Wilson, who you know the Jets are talking about, to uh, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, Trey Lance. We all know Trevor Lawrence is going number one. This is a good draft class. I don't think next year's draft class a quarterback is going to be as good, but still you're going to have some people who are free agents or maybe a, another uh, guy you can trade for. So I think Washington football should just sit tight at quarterback now, if I were them. Yeah, I agree with you about the quarterback. From my point of view, it's really a one quarterback draft, certainly for high-end talent, but if all goes to plan, Washington won't be there, but I think you addressed that when the time comes, if I was the front office, I would consider taking a tackle with they need to reinforce that line and they haven't really replaced Rurum since he left and that line, bar and sheriff, there's no one what would scare you if you was the opposition pass rush. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, uh, listen, if you – let's just say that they stay at 19, okay? If you stay at 19 and you don't trade up, um, I would agree with you. I would take either the best uh, offensive lineman available or I would take the best linebacker available. I, I think yeah. this team could use a linebacker as well. Uh, there's a ton of good linebackers in this draft. There's um, – really there's more linebackers uh, in this draft than there is offensive linemen. So it just kind of depends what's left at 19. By the time you get to 19, a lot of the really good, um, you know, first round graded uh, offensive linemen may be gone. And so it, it may behoove you to take a linebacker at that spot instead. And certainly as you and I know, um, you know, Ron Rivera is a former defensive player. And so, uh, you know, I would want him making the decision in terms of linebackers, um, you know, when it comes to drafting, because he, he played uh, on the defensive side of the football. So uh, I, w- I, I would feel comfortable with that as well uh, if I'm Washington football team. Offensive line or linebacker is yep. 19, best available. Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, it's going to be interesting, but um, looking at some of their other additions, I actually liked what they did. Samuel was 
He was a player I would have liked the Jets to get, and I think he compliments what they had. And he's just sort of where the offense is going in the NFL. He's a bit of a gadget receiver. And the one promising thing is, from my understand, he really campaigned to come to Washington. And how many players can you say in recent years truly wanted it? And from what I understand, he could have went elsewhere. So if I was a Washington fan, I would consider that the biggest plus point, even apart from his talent, that perhaps people start to perceive Washington as a changed team. I think that's a great point. You know, Curtis Samuel um, wanted to be with Washington. Washington wanted him. There were rumors that Ron Rivera was trying to trade for him last season, all the way up into the trade deadline, a deal he did not get done. So, um, you know, obviously when Samuel became available, uh, they went out and got him. But here's the most impressive thing to me. They got this man for three years, $34.5 million. I mean, honestly, uh, when I first saw that, I thought I was reading the numbers wrong because he could have got more money elsewhere. And if you look at just in the division, what the Giants gave Kenny Galladay, <laughs> I mean, uh, the, I, I like Curtis Samuel more than Kenny Galladay. And I know Galladay's a good player, but he's always hurt. I can't count yeah. on him. I mean, he misses games all the time. Curtis Samuel plays. He's versatile. Uh, he can play slot. He can play the outside. He can run the ball on jet sweeps. And you're absolutely right. I think he's a great compliment to Terry McLaurin. Uh, they're former teammates and roommates in college. Uh, he's friends with Chase Young. Uh, he's obviously familiar with Ron Rivera and that offense uh, that, that Scott Turner wants to run. So to me, I, I just think that um, – I got to tell you, man, I, I think it's the perfect, uh, the perfect fit. And I hope you're right, man. I, I hope that uh, a lot more players kind of have this attitude about coming to play for Washington football. Yeah, I mean, I like him. I'm with you with Galladay. I know he's a good player, but a lot of Jets fans were clamoring for him and saying, give him whatever he wants. I didn't want him just because of his injury history what yeah. you'd have to pay him. And I looked at him as someone, what sort of Denzel Mims does, what he does. So why would you get the same receiver? It didn't make sense. But uh, also what I like about Samuel is his leadership as well. It's not just what he does on the field, which I do prefer him to Galladay anyway. It's just I feel he's more of a leader than what Galladay is, and that's what Washington needs, someone that will just stand up and be counted and lead from the front. Yeah, I agree with that. And, you know, here's one thing you and I both know. Uh, bringing in Samuel makes Terry McLaurin that much better because now the defenses cannot key in on him like they were last season when he was the only target. Uh, now, you know, with Samuel, uh, you, you better pay attention to Samuel as well. And even Humphreys to some degree, uh, because if not, uh, those guys can beat you. And Ryan Fitzpatrick can get the ball to any of those guys because we know he'll throw it downfield. Yeah, I'd Ray, And that was another thing. Humphreys, I love that. So he's one of the better slot guys. I know he's had some injuries, but I think he's durable enough to pay him. And I still feel like, they might draft one more receiver to complete the tandem. I'm not saying high up, but there is value in those middle rounds for a receiver because they don't need to draft a number one receiver, just a compliment guy. And if they hit on that draft pick, that would be some sort of foursome to... Um, help with quarterback and I think that's why they went for Fitzpatrick they sort of said we can get him relatively cheaply and then sort of spread Romani around and get this receiving call because McLaurin can't do it on his own yeah I agree with that I listen I like um I'm not ready to give up on Cam Sims yet I mean you know this is a guy 
uh, who's six five. Uh, and you know, if you look at these receivers, Samuel McClure and Humphreys, they're all really good. They're all good route runners. Um, they're all good in the slot. Uh, but you know, none of them are big, are big guys. And so, you know, I, I think, uh, Sims is someone who has size. He's been here for a while now with this team. Uh, I, I just think it kind of makes sense to, um, maybe just give him a, another chance and, and hopefully, uh, you're not, I thought last year they were asking too much of him. So maybe this year, if you don't ask as much of him, uh, maybe he can, be that big, uh, that big back. And remember, they have Kelvin Harmon coming back as well from injury. Uh, I don't know about, you know, Steve Sims Jr. Uh, we'll see. It, it might not, uh, he might be the odd man out, but you have Harmon coming back from injury and then Cam Sims, the big body. Uh, I think that wide receiving core might be set where it is. Yeah, I agree. And it'll be interesting. Another sign in what they, made was Rayram Jackson, which I like this signing. That I think there is an argument to say he's certainly up there for the best defensive player available. I know there was some pass rushes, but I just thought in this today's NFL you need to do something in the secondary. And I thought Jackson I would have loved him at the Jets. I said on a few of my streams you could get me on board with paying him whatever he wanted because in today's NFL with some of the quarterbacks, you just need good secondary or you might as well just give them the game. That's right. I agree. I, I mean, for me, uh, not only is, is he a corner that you could put on the other team's best receiver, but I like that he's a big body too. I mean, you're yeah. talking about a guy that's six feet tall, uh, 200 pounds can come up and tackle uh, can come up and, and help you and run support. Uh, I, you know, I really, what he is, you know, he's just a very solid player. He's just a really good football player. And um, you know, you were talking about leadership and character. I think he has that as well. Uh, uh, he's one of those guys, even though he's on the defensive side, you know, I think he's going to fit right in with a chase young, uh, with a Duran Payne, right? And some of those guys on the defensive side. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> I don't care who you have playing defensive back. If you are rushing the other team's quarterback, that that defensive back's going to have success. And so, you know, I think for him, it's probably one of the reasons he chose Washington uh, is because he knew – you know, with that defensive line, and we'll see what they do at linebacker, potentially that front seven overall, uh, he's going to have an opportunity to get some interceptions back there. Yeah, and um, we're speaking about leadership, and something I want to trust you is with Ryan Kagan still out on the market, do you think he could still come back on a cheaper deal? because no one snatched him up. Let's, uh, I feel like they might come to some sort of compromise where one-year deal, keep that leadership and sort of on a very cheap deal. I don't think so. I think it's over. Um, I, I think he will end up getting signed somewhere. I don't think he's going to get the money that he thinks. No. Um, but, you know, listen, if, if the money's equal... Uh, he's going to go to a new place. And so uh, I thought he was going to end up with the Bengals. Uh, he went to visit the Bengals, and and I thought that made a lot of sense for them, you know, a team building around Joe Burrow. And, uh, you know, you can get a veteran guy to to help uh, the locker room. And, and really, you know, they're trying to change the culture there in Cincinnati. But um, he visited Cincy, and there was no – they didn't sign him. So – uh, sometimes, you know, when a guy comes to visit and uh, he comes into the facility and leaves the facility without a deal, that's not a good sign. So uh, I'll be interested to, to see where he goes. If I was him, I would forget the money and I would just go uh, sign somewhere that, you know, I can get a Super Bowl ring potentially. I would I would go to a Tampa 
or a Kansas City, uh, you know, and I and I would just do it for the minimum and try to go win a Super Bowl because uh, to me that's the only thing really missing in in his career. Yeah, I agree. Um, just to bring this up, I'd love to get your thoughts on the Jets offseason. My point of view is I feel like they surprised people. They didn't go for the big targets for everyone for. I think they made some good signings, and you can get me on board with a lot of them, but I feel Douglas is playing that risky game because they almost need two calling backs and two guards, and if you're going go through the draft route that's asking a lot of rookies you almost only want one in each position to be a rookie so um what did you think of a the signings and that tactic yeah i i mean i like that tactic i thought um i thought tevin coleman was was a good signing I, i know a lot of people weren't talking about that but you know uh i mean he knows that offense um and you know he never you know that 49ers backfield was really crowded they just had so many running backs I don't think uh Tevin Coleman ever really um you know got a chance to be the guy I mean when he did play I thought uh I thought he proved he could be productive but even when he played in Atlanta it was the same thing he was always like a you know it was him and somebody else so I think Coleman uh, could be the move that, you know, I, I know people want to talk about Corey Davis and all that, but I, I and Keenan Cole, but I thought, um, I thought Coleman was kind of a under the radar move that made a lot of sense to me. Uh, obviously, we know Sal is going to come in and want to run the ball and establish that kind of identity. And, and uh, one thing about his teams, you know, even as a defensive coordinator, I mean, that 49ers defense was tough, man. They were intense and tough, just like he is. And uh, so I think the Jets, you know, are going to want to run the football and protect the ball with whoever's at quarterback. That's why I say I'm Darnold. You're right. It doesn't make a lot of sense because uh, you, you're going to need someone to not turn the ball over. I think they will try to be a good defensive team, run the ball, and just have a quarterback to not lose it as they wait for, you know, whoever. Uh, they take with that second pick to develop. But I, I also like uh, Corey Davis. He was he was a, the wide receiver I actually wanted for the Washington football team because of his big body. I think he's he's just big and strong. He can block. Um, and I, I just thought, you know, he's not the fastest guy you've ever seen, but he's a really good player and uh, he has good hands. I just thought he's a solid wide receiver. So, you, you know, I think I think that was a good move by them. And uh, they just need help everywhere. I mean, the Jets are a mess. So if they can just get some players in there uh, that can score some touchdowns, they should be okay. Because I think Sala will instantly make the defense that much better. They just need some people that can score. Yeah, I agree. I mean, um, I felt sorry for Cole. You mentioned this signing because it leaked on the day that they were in the Juju sweepstake. And Cole was a good signing, but the fans were dreaming of Juju. And then they announce his sign, and then there's like, oh, what the hell's this? But he, you, you have to remember, he'll probably be the fourth receiver, which he's up there for any fourth receiver. So I like the signing and signings like Lawson. I like he's getting better with every season, and that's what they went for. Players, what? are getting better, sort of their first uh, big contract, and that's who they paid. And I did think a week ago, I said on a few of my streams, that the way they've sort of passed the money out and filled in holes, it kept making me think that they might keep Darnold and trade down. But with the 49ers move, let's cast a bit of doubt because if they was thinking of trading down, are they going to get better than that offer? So, um, and you've got to think that with the Sala connection, they would have at least called them because why would you trade for the third pick if you can have the second pick? Yeah, I agree. I think you're right. 
and I think uh, I think it's going to be Zach Wilson. That's what I think yeah. is going to happen. Oh, I think great. they're going to yeah. I think they're going to take Zach Wilson, and maybe uh, they try to move Darnold uh, between now and the draft or on draft night. Um, you know, maybe somebody. You know, because you have to think there's going to be some team out there that didn't get their quarterback and they thought they were going to get during the draft because right now it looks like, uh, I think for the first time in history, at least I don't remember seeing a quarterback go one, two, three, but uh, I think that's going to happen. I think you're going to get Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, and we'll see. You know, it could be yeah. Fields, could be Jones, could be Trey Lance uh, to the Niners, whoever they like. And so one of those teams whether it's the Panthers or the Falcons or, or, you know, one of the teams we know that needs a quarterback, they're going to be left out in the cold. And so maybe do they pick up the phone uh, and call and try to get Sam Darnold? I'll tell you a team uh, that I think should go and get them. I, if I were the Seahawks with all their problems they have with keeping Russell Wilson happy, um, you know, I would I would go get Sam Darnold. And I think you can, as you and I talked about, I think you can get him for the right price. I would get Sam Darnold and have him back up Russell Wilson for a year. And then, you know, if you're if you're still having problems with Russell Wilson, you could trade him before the trade deadline this year, or you could trade him in the offseason next year. And then you have Darnold who sat for a year. Uh, obviously, Pete Carroll's a USC guy. Uh, I, I, that's who I would, you know, if I was Sam Darnold, I would want to go there. I wouldn't even care that I'm a backup. You'll probably be a backup anywhere you go anyways. Yeah. Carol's a big fan of his. One rumor, what I find interesting what's going about with New York media is the Bears might trade a second round pick plus Nick Foles. And that's an interest. They ain't got backups. So. It does make you think that would be an interesting deal for both sides. Yeah, the Bears are a mess. I can't trust yeah. any. The only team that's more of a mess than your Jets is the Bears. I mean, when you yeah, sign Andy, <laughs> you sign Andy Dalton to be your quarterback. I can't trust anything that you do. <laughs> I found it interesting. I've said on a few streams it does because. I, if I was Jameis Winston's agent, I would have been on the phone to them, and I'm surprised they didn't go for him because Andy Dalton, I thought he's going to be a good backup last year, but when he came in, he looked, to put blunt, like a scared child running for his life. <laughs> he was. He was a scared, red-headed child <laughs> running for his life. <laughs> It's interesting, but um, and I really do think that's the perfect place um to end the episode because I know you've got a conference call to get to. But um, I want to thank you for coming on again, and I did great time. Absolutely, man. You know I love coming on, and uh, let's do it again. Let's do it again around the draft time, man. Let's do a little mock draft or something. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um. I am um, looking to get do something around the drafts of either profile or draft reaction for each team. So I'd love to have you on to talk Washington with me. I love it, man. I love it. You know, I always love coming on and thank you for the invite always. Okay, thank you. And until next time, let's talk sport fans. <laughs>